Guys, it's Robson Hayashida here, and today we're going to talk about the constriction uh, using Bollinger Bands. So basically, what are you looking for when I say constriction? As you know that uh, Bollinger Bands talks about, it's all about actually how the volatility pl plays around uh, on charts of, uh, of trades that you may be looking for. For example, in this case, uh, we are looking at USD JPY. So here you have dollar yen pair on the four hour chart, okay? So each uh, candlestick represents four hours in this chart. And what I'm looking for here is the constriction. So what is constriction? Uh, once again, if you haven't watched my other videos about Bollinger Bands, if you have uh, no knowledge about Bollinger Bands, I advise you to watch my Bollinger Bands videos that talks about the, like the basic concepts of Bollinger Bands. I'm going to put the link uh, here, <laughs> okay? So you can uh, just click on the link above, like up, and take a look at my previous videos. So in this video, I'm I will focus on uh, constriction. So what is constriction? Constriction is when you have uh, both of the Bollinger Bands, so you have the upper band and the lower band, and they're going to close, okay? So uh, looking at this chart, I have, you, you see that the Bollinger Band, this is this uh, green uh, line here. This is the upper band, and you have here, the lower band okay so you have two bands okay here the the period here is 20 okay so bollinger bands we're going to set the bollinger bands to the let me see if i can show you guys uh indicators yeah so i think we can take a look at the indicators that we are using here i haven't I haven't checked this for a long time, but let me take a look. So, no, not here. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay, so these are the Bollinger Bands. So you can see here that the period that we are using is 20. So we said we, have, uh, we haven't changed the default. So the default Bollinger Bands, the period is set to 20. And you have two deviations, okay. Uh, that talks about the uh, upper band and the lower band. So what I'm looking here is when the upper band and the lower band close, uh, they, they close like this, okay? So when they close like that is when I'm going to place the trade. And what does it mean? What, the, what does constriction mean? It means that basically we came to a certain point of the chart when the price already made a jump, okay? So uh, let me take a look at one constriction. Let's, for, for example, let's look at this uh, constriction here. So what actually happened uh, here? So I came to a point that I have my candlesticks, okay, moving up. So it made a huge jump because if you can see here, it went all the way down, okay? So from here, from the 109.630, it made a huge jump. Can you see it? And it went all the way up to around uh, 1.111.734, uh, okay? And after that, it was ranging like this, okay? And you can see that the Bollinger Bands are closing. They are getting like together, okay? So what does it mean? It means that after a huge jump, okay, and the price went to the next level. We usually, usually like call the next level. So it, ha it made a huge jump. It went to the next level. And then uh, when you look for the constriction, the bands are closing because you have the price going up and down, up and down, bits by bits like that. So when you see that, it means that the price, it's testing the market. We also say we are passing through a consolidation okay, area. So it's a consolidation area. So we can uh, identify this by, we call it like testing, like the market. Uh, let me see. We call it, okay, testing uh, constriction, okay, of the bands. And this is a consolidation area. Why? Because 
after this consolidation area, it's pre actually preparing itself to make the next jump. Is it up or down? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Let's take a look at the charts. So we don't know yet, but what you can see here that after, so you see that the bands are closing and you got the candlesticks touching the upper band. Okay. And you see the price is going up. So what, when that happens, uh, what you look at here is that, uh, can I close this? I, I, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. So, yeah, because sometimes it gives me like an, an ad or some information, but sometimes like a, a window pops up, but let's see. What you look at this is we're going to look at MACD 4C. So why do I like this one? Is because here, I need to see if it's going uh, up or going down. So here, what did touch it? The upper band. And I'm looking for a second uh, confirmation. So I look at the Mac D4C and I see that we started to go up and making another so can you see this mount? Well, a kind of mountain. <laughs> can you see this set of mountains here? So this talks about when the trend is bullish or bearish. So when you see this green, okay? So you see this green and then light green. So when you see the light green, it means that the trend is bullish. So if I see this like red like this, an inverted mountain like this, it means that the trend is bearish. So you look at this, right? And you look here. As a matter of fact, the price went down, uh, so this is a bearish trend, okay? So I identify the trend by looking at the mountains or the inverted mountains on uh, MACD 4C, okay? So I placed my trade here, and I went bullish, okay? So uh, usually when it's time to close the trade, it's, uh, well, here is past, so you can say you can say that you I could close it here you can say that but like this would be extremely aggressive all right so usually and why do I say so because if I close it here uh, it doesn't really make sense to close it here like it makes sense now because <laughs> it's already passed but it doesn't make sense when it didn't happen yet. why because I'm looking at this one so I look at this one and the double shoulders would be around this area, right? So it would make sense to close here. But again, that would be also would be very aggressive, all right? It would be aggressive. So when I look at like this point, okay? And uh, I look at the one that uh, you see that this key level here. So Key levels are whole numbers. Uh, if you don't know key levels, you can refer to my past videos. Uh, so at 112 point, actually it's 112.000 would be a key level, okay? So when you look at this, you see that here there was a huge green candlestick that broke this level, okay? So it, and then went down again for a correction, okay? So after this point, when you see that the correction is over, okay, you, and, 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 and here it was not. Why? Because it went all the way down and closed it here. So uh, what makes sense in this case would be to uh, open the trade at some point here and close it right after this green candle. Why? Because it went all the way up and didn't hit this uh, key level and after that it started to go bearish again so what you should have done in this case okay you could change it back to one hour and see the reaction of that particular uh, point there on the one hour uh, chart okay so which means uh, let me see if I can But that would be a long time ago. Yeah, that would be a long time ago because this happened like, yeah. I will not, I want to go that back. But anyways, what you can see is you go back into lower time frames and see 
uh, if you have any more clues about the price uh, movement. Okay, so uh, ah, about now about the stop loss. So once uh, you got this trend and you have a confirmation that is uh, bullish, let's say that you place your trade. Uh, let me. Can I use something? Let's see that you place your trade around somewhere around here, okay? Around here. And let's say it goes against you. So when do you place your stop loss? In this case, it would make sense to place your stop loss right below the middle band. Why? Because once it breaks the middle band, okay? It breaks this middle band, it goes all the way down. I will look at in this case specifically would be close to the middle uh, band and close to a key level. Why? Because once it breaks the key level, also breaks the middle band, is you probably go into another direction. So you don't want to you don't want to stay in the trade once it goes be like below that level. Why? Because it goes below that level, we will try to break the lower band. You'll try to at least touch the lower band. But you don't want to to stay in the trade until it touches the lower band. Of course not. So you stop loss before it happens. Okay guys, so this is the my message for today about constrictions. If you have any questions about constrictions using Bollinger Bands, please uh, post your comment below and I see you guys on my next video. So that's it. Bye.